it's Bethany with the Gypsy Bird Makes Podcast, and welcome to episode 13. We are currently just outside of Park City, Utah, and I have a lot to talk about today. Um, I have four finished objects and three works in progress. Um, yeah, so a whole bunch of things. I also have a giveaway winner to announce later on, so stick around for that. Um, but just welcome to the very first second podcast of the month. It feels really strange to be doing one so soon. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be fun. I have things to talk about, so let's get to it. Finished Objects. So I have had a very stressful two weeks since the last time you guys saw me in the podcast. If you've watched my blog, you will understand why. And if you haven't but want to know, stick around to the end and I will chat about it a little bit. Um, but that stress and craziness equaled knitting because I needed something to focus on. <laughs> Knitting was that. So it worked out perfectly that I got a few things done. So the first finished object is my headband, which I am loving it, or my ear warmers as I am actually using it for. So this is called the Aurora Headband by Megan Nodecker. She's also known as Pip and Pen, and I absolutely love it. So I was looking for something that was going to keep my ears warm if I had my hair up in a bun or a ponytail, but it's the messy mom bun most of the time. So I needed something to keep my ears warm when that happened. I have several hats, but you can't, you can't do that when you got the bun going on. So I just looked for a pattern and actually I have a friend who I think sent me this pattern as a suggestion. And, um, I love this pattern. It worked out so great and I love how it turned out. Um, it's nice and wide and it keeps my ears warm and it looks cute while doing it, I think. So works for me. So this was the first finished object. Um, let me take it off real fast. Oh, okay. So this is how it looks off my big old head. You can see the back. And if this yarn looks familiar, it should because it was um, also a finished object in my last podcast. Um, this was is, let me tell you what it is first. Um, this is 29 Bridges Studios in Who Do You? Um, yeah, I love this. It's so pretty. I picked this up at Black Mountain Yarn Shop in Asheville, North Carolina when, to, when I went to SAF back in October. Um, and I finished these beautiful fingerless mitts last podcast. So now I have a matching set, which I think is really fun and I'm really enjoying it. These are kind of dirty because I used them when we were um, packing up the camper, but they were, they great, were great and they're going to be used this afternoon too. Um, so let's get back to the actual finished object. Um, this uh, pattern was really unique because I thought um, other headbands that I've done, I thought you'd like for the twisty part, you just like twist it when you join them if you've ever done that before and this one is not like that this one has this cool little feature that it split you can see there and you actually kind of split it and do two different things with the pattern I don't want to say too much because it is paid for um, but I love how it turned out I think it was really fun and a really great great little pattern. So I used a US 3, which is a 3.25 millimeter. The pattern does call for a US 4, I believe, um, but all my 4s were being used and I got pretty close to gauge with the 3. So I just went ahead and used that. Um, this pattern is really great. It's kind of like the muscle bro pattern. If you've ever made that hat, it um, has where you can use all different um, weights of yarn. So I used fingering weight for mine, but I think it goes up to like worsted that you can use with this pattern and you just do gauge or, um, was it gauge or does it tell you what weight? I think it was gauge and it tells you like how many stitches to cast on and what to do and which to follow. Um, so 10 out of 10 for the pattern, really loved it. I would definitely make this pattern again and I may do that. And, um, yeah, it was just a really fun, fun make. It was really fast. I made it in like four days and yeah. And here's my join. If you guys want to see, um, it is right here. You just kitchener it right here is my join. So it's pretty, 
pretty seamless, but I really love that finished object. Now that my hair is like an absolute wild child. So the next project that I finished was meant to be a road trip um, project, but didn't really work out that way because I just kept knitting on it. <laughs> so I knew that I wanted to make my husband some socks and going through my yarn stash, I don't really have a whole bunch of manly colored socks like yarn. There's a lot of girly like pinks and purples and yeah, so I was having a little bit of a hard time. So what I ended up doing was getting two 50 gram um, minis that I had and using those and kind of made some mismatch socks. So the socks that I made um, are kind of funky, but I really love them. So these are the socks. You can see that I kind of flipped them on their toes a little bit. So I called them the mismatched ribbed socks. Um, and what I did was using the two different 50 gram minis, I cast on both socks with one of the minis and then I swapped the opposite color for the body. And then I switched back for the heels and then for the switch back for the body again and then for the toe. I'm sure there's an easier way to say that there's gotta be an easier way to say that, but hopefully you get what I'm saying. Um, and this yarn is yarn that I got from the Fangirl Fiber, May the Fourth Be With You. Um, what was it? Box, package, something last May. Uh, so I've had these um, skeins for quite a while. The blue that is right here is called Crushing on Han. And then the red right on this one is Crushing on Kylo. So if you're Star Wars fans, you will get what those mean. Um, and I thought that they went really well together. Um, my husband's a big red fan, so I knew that the red one was gonna be good. And the pattern, I didn't really use a pattern. I did um, just some ribbing. I did a one by one rib for the cuff, which was 20 rounds. And then I did a ribbed body on the leg, which was a three knit three pearl one. Um, I did a slip stitch, heel flap and gusset, and then continued with the ribbing on the top of the foot and then stocking it on the bottom. So I really liked how these turned out. I think they're kind of fun. At first I was going to do one sock all like all Han and then the other sock all Kylo. And then I thought, why not kind of mix it up and kind of make them even more they kind of go better together with this way. So these are for my husband and I'm gonna be giving them to him today to use. Um, let's see, I used a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle um, and I used uh, Magic Loop Chiaogu needles for those, which is what I always use. And then, let's see, I used 77 grams total. And for Kylo, I have I used 38 grams, so I have like, what, 22-ish grams left, and this is all I have left of that one. And for Han, I used 39, which doesn't make sense because I used the exact same amount, um, but this is all I have left of that one. And I'm excited to put these away because they keep falling everywhere. <laughs> but here's the tags for the Fangirl Fiber. So this is her, her logo, and this one was Crush It On Han. And here we have a question on Kylo. I think these were exclusive to the May the 4th box. So don't think you can get them any other way. I could be wrong, but I'll link Fangirl Fiber down below in case you want to check it out and see if she has anything. I don't think she does right now. But those were my second finished object and the ones that I thought I was going to have for the road trip and finished well before we even went. So yeah, that was a fail, but I did get them done, which was nice. My third finished object was also a road trip cast on that got finished 
first day of the road trip, <laughs> so that was also another fail. But I cast on a muscle bra for my daughter, Felicity. She had been wanting one after seeing me wear mine. And she picked out the yarn, or well, I gave her two options, and she picked out this color. So um, I made her a muscle bra, and the pattern is by Yozolda Teague. If you, Yozolda Teague, if you haven't heard of it, then that's a miracle because it's been everywhere, but it's a great pattern. I'll have it linked down below for you guys. I've made, I don't even know how many, quite a few, quite a few, probably like seven or eight maybe. I don't know. That might be too much. I don't know. I've made a few. So I really like this pattern. And let me show you the yarn. It is by a farmer's daughter. Um, and it is their squish fingering in rough customer because see how much it was there um this is my first time using farmer's daughter and i have to say i wasn't all that impressed i don't know it's not my favorite um here's what the yarn looks like in the hat so let's talk about the yarn for a second um the dye kept rubbing off on my hands and that could totally be like me thing I think it was because I think I was stressed that day and I don't know if I was sweating or what but I definitely had dark fingers when I was um, washing my hands that day um, and it was from the yarn but it's I don't know it just wasn't my favorite it's not one like oh I love that base I want to go back and get more of that um, it is a hundred percent superwash I think is it superwash 100% yeah superwash merino um but I don't know I don't think I'll go out of my way to buy more farmer's daughter but the yarn is beautiful and there's nothing wrong with it it just wasn't my favorite to work with let's just say that so here is the Musselberg so I made the adult medium size kind of she didn't want it slouchy she didn't want it folding up she just wanted it to go on her head so um it's pretty short for a muscle bark or muscle bra um let me put it on it fits me too actually it's really nice so you can see how it goes on it doesn't have any slouch to it it just goes covers the ears and all of that so yeah i think it turned out really nice i like it if you're not familiar with the muscle board pattern, what you do is you cast on at one end, you do your increases, and then you knit, 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 knit until you get down here, and then you do your decreases. And it's in long tube like this. So you can see this one is rather short. Um, and there was some pulling in the yarn, but I think it looks really cool. I like how that did. It's kind of neat. So, and then you take it and you take one end and kind of shove it into the other end. Oh, it's hard to do this on the spot. Here we go. Put it in like this. And then you have your hat. And a lot of times they can be slouchy or you can pull it up like and have it like brimmed. But yeah, that was the one that she wanted. I think she's going to like it. I am giving it to her after this podcast, so she should be excited. Um, let's see. I used a US 3, which is a 3.25 millimeter. That's what I always have used with my fingering weight muscle burrows. And I got six and a half stitches per inch and used 62 grams. So just over half a skein. But yeah, that was done. I finished this on the first day of our road trip, like I mentioned. And yeah, then I was like, well, what else am I going to work on? <laughs> but I do have something else that I have finished and I want to show you. And it, surprise, surprise, it's another muscle burrow. <laughs> so I was making this one. Oh, it's got hair on it. Okay, so fun story with this. Yesterday we went down into Salt Lake City and the dogs were here. And our one dog, who was laying right over there, um, gets anxious and likes to chew things up when we're gone sometimes and I had this hat sitting out on the stove blocking or drying from where I'd washed it and I looked on the camera and I could see it in the floor and I was like if she tore that up I'm gonna be so angry so it's a little hairy because apparently it's been all over the floor and probably needs another good washing but it um 
does not look to have any damage to it. I don't know what she was doing, but anyways, so you will have seen this in my works in progress last podcast, but it is my scrappy muscle bra and I finished it. Look at it. Isn't it so pretty? I love how this turned out. When I started, I really wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. Um, I was like, uh, we'll see. I don't know how I'm going to like it. But the more I knit on it, the more I loved it. Um, so these scraps were in my swap with the Love and Stitches we did for, we did an Advent swap for December. And my partner Summer sent me all of these beautiful yarns. Um, and I was like, I want to use them in something, something scrappy. So I decided a muscle bra, which I would try a scrappy muscle bra. So that's what this is. And these yarns are all either Big Sky Yarn Co. or Super Fine Yarn Co. And these were part of the Row 1 subscription. So they're all in this little, sweet little can, um, bundle and had like a little tag and it told you the name and stuff. And I've tried to keep them together, uh, but some of them have not stayed together, the tags with the yarn. <laughs> so it's, I can't, I can't tell you which one which color is which really, but I really like them. So this one I wanted to make super long and big. Um, and this one, my, I also use the US three, um, 3.25 millimeter. Um, I did this one on a six, did I do this one? No, I did Felicity's on a 16 inch circular. And this one was on um, Magic Loop because I didn't have any more and I was working on them at the same time. Um, oh, what am I gonna say? I got seven inch, seven stitches per inch with this one, so half a stitch more. I don't understand. Um, and let me see, anything else? I made it extra long, I already said that. I was using this for the 30 for 30, which we're also doing in the Love and Stitches membership, which is where you pick a project to work on for at least 30 minutes a day for 30 days and finish that project up. So I was doing that, which got me, um, 30 minutes would get me one stripe plus one other kind of sometimes depended on how fast I was knitting that day. Um, but each row is eight row or each stripe, sorry, is eight rows. Um, so I kind of just picked eight and went with it. And I think it turned out really well. Um, it was using about four grams per, four grams per stripe. Um, so I actually haven't put this on since I blocked it. Um, so let's see, which side do I want? I think I want this side. Let's see what it looks like. It's really going to be really big. So this is either going to be slouchy or brim up a whole bunch. We will see. I think, I need, I think some people are leaving. <clears throat> so look how big this one is compared to Felicity's. So this is the difference at the moment. Quite a bit more. <laughs> Quite a bit more knitting on this one. So see so you can see I actually haven't seen but this is with it slouchy cute I don't know if I will wear it slouchy at all or if I will use the brim so I can also take the brim up and get it really nice and it's still not too tight on my hand it's still a little loose but yeah Look at that. Isn't that cool? I love the scrappiness of it. It's so fun. So that was the other finished object. I finished this just a couple nights ago. Um, yeah, just like two nights ago. So that's my scrappy muscle barrel. And that is the last, yeah, last finished object for today. kind of feel like I'm all over the place and not making sense today. So if it's coming across that way, I apologize. <laughs> I'm filming this in the morning, which I normally don't do. I normally do it later in the day. And yeah, everyone's asleep. So I'm trying not to be too loud. And yeah, it's just been crazy. But anyways, well, let's go on to works in progress. I have a three, well, two and a bit kind of to show you. Um, so the corgi sweater, I was hoping to be a lot farther along with this, um, but my life has just been too stressful for me to concentrate on it. 
and to sit down and actually put the brain power in to do it. So I have done a little bit, but not a whole bunch. So this is what I have so far. I've done this bit of color work, which I think is looking really good. I'm liking it. And here are my floats on the back. <clears throat> this is where I was. I was at this little guy right here who is my little possum, my sister Sabra. So I was right here last time. So I did get it like quite a bit. I did this all in one night, I think. Yeah, I did it all in one night. Um, and then life got crazy and I didn't do anymore. But I kind of messed up with the pattern a little bit. So let me tell you the details and then we'll get into that. So this is the Corgi Sweater by Rose Marion and it is um, gorgeous. It's going to be really pretty. I'm making this for my daughter Felicity because she has a Corgi that is her best friend and everything. Um, the pattern calls for, I think it was a US 5 and a US 6, but I'm using a US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter, and a US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter. Um, and the yarn is Knit Picks. It is just, let me see, Swish DK weight. I have the color black, and then the color Allspice. The next one I have is just, I think it's just white. Yeah, just white there. And then I have this pink, which is kind of a ball of mess at the moment, which is Blossom Heather. So those are the yarns that I am using and all that information. Um, the pattern is a little vague. I think I mentioned that last time. Um, Maybe for an experienced, really experienced knitter who has done a lot of color work and things like that, it wouldn't be. But for me, I haven't done a, I haven't really done, I haven't done a yoke down color work sweater. Um, so a little more information would be great for me. So I messed up on the increases that I was doing at some point. I don't even remember. I think it was like up here I didn't increase correctly or something um, and I think I have one less diamond than I am supposed to so what I did was fudge the increases a little bit so I added a couple of black rows right here and increased to where I need it to be and I haven't worked on it since because I haven't I've been too scared to go back and count all the stitches and make sure that I did that correctly and see if I'm going to be able to move on or if I need to rip out. Um, I just haven't had the headspace for it. I haven't had the thoughts to do it. Yeah, I just haven't. So I'm hoping maybe tonight or the next few nights I'll be able to do that. Um, but we have a couple of stressful days ahead. So I don't know. It might be sitting until we get to where we're going. Um, but I'm happy with it so far. I think it's going to turn out really cute. I think the color work, I was really worried about the color work and I like overanalyze how, how loose I need to do my um, floats. And if you do it too loose, then it's going to look sloppy. And if you do it too tight, then it's going to pull and I just overthink it. <laughs> so I try to just go slowly and just not pull it tight and make sure that it's kind of loose. Um, sorry, I thought I saw somebody, but it was just the electrical thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just trying my best to take it slow and not rush it. But yeah, that's all I, I would have liked to have gotten a lot more done, but that's what I have right now. And I think it's looking pretty good. So if you have any tips on, um, continental knitting color work, let me know because I think there's some places where there's like three colors at once. That's just going to be really slow rows. <laughs> but hopefully next time I'll have a little more work done for you. And this is being housed in my bag by Cottontail Farms. I love this bag. It is so cute. And it has all my stuff down in there. So I'm just keeping it in that. And then there's also another progress keeper. This is like my beginning of round progress keeper. This is by, um, oops, sorry. This is by Simply Serving. 
Um, it was, I got it last year. It's a little sweater, and I don't know where the I don't know where the possum came from, but I love it so much. It's so cute. So that's the first work in progress. My second one I actually just started last night, um, so it's brand new, and I needed it. Since I just finished those muscle burls, I needed something simple because that was literally the only thing on my needles. Um, and I had, after my scrappy muscle burl, I had a whole bunch of yarn left over. Um, and let me show you. I'll show you. This isn't even all of it. But you can see I have little bits left over. So, like, this is how much I still had of the of the yarn after doing my stripes and I did even like some of them I did two stripes like this one so I don't have nearly as much of this one left um, but just one stripe left me with about this much which I'd say is like six grams probably because these were 10 gram minis um, so I was like I'll make something else scrappy with it because I really want to use up that yarn I really like it I think it's cute and I don't want to put that much minis back in my stash so I thought I'll make a scrappy socks. I cast on the scrappy socks and I couldn't decide if I wanted to make them matching or if I wanted to kind of do a mismatch of um, kind of thing. So I decided on mismatch and I decided that I was going to make them like I made my husband's socks, the ribbed, um, the rib socks, the Star Wars mismatch ones because uh, I wanted to make some rib socks for myself. I had a, haven't really made myself rib socks and yeah, this was the perfect opportunity. So what I did was cast, oh, I'm losing the yarn. Hold on. Here we go. So I cast these on last night and you can see there's a whole bunch of strings everywhere. But I cast them on and I, originally I was going to do five rounds each color. And then I saw how little five rounds was after I had done like five of the blue and five of the green. And I was like, Ugh, it's kind of small. So then I was thinking, okay, I'll do five and then seven and then five and then seven. So that's the plan right now. So I did five for the blue, seven for the green, five for the purple, and then um, seven for the pink. And I'm liking it so far. It kind of gives it a little texture, kind of makes it a little even more funky. And yeah, so I'm doing the one by one ribbing for 20 rounds, which I have done here. And then I've also started on the leg. And I'm also using the Perfect Fit class formula to make these. So these are going to fit like my... Um, my Star Wars socks that I really like and I'm not going to talk about the sizing and like stuff like that because it is a paid for course and it's really great if you guys are interested I'll put the wait list down below it's by Nitty Natty um, and she just takes you through how to make the perfect fit socks and really those socks are one of my absolute favorite pair and I think it's because they fit so well so it definitely works so I would definitely definitely suggest checking that out if you're interested and want to make socks or can't make socks that fit you perfectly if you're having problems with that she helps so much it's amazing um so that's what I have for this one and I am doing another nitty natty thing I am doing where you let me see where if I can find it so where you start to kind of I'm weaving over my, or not weaving over my ends, I'm knitting over my ends, and I'm doing it before the round ends, so I start with the second color, and um, start to kind of knit over that end so that it pulls it together really nicely and makes it really seamless, so you can see you can't really, there's no really pulling there from where my two colors are, which is amazing, because I had so much trouble with that, and Natalie has a I think she has a tutorial on that. I think it's public. If it's public, I'll have it linked down below. Um, but it's really great. And I, I use that with my muscle burrow and I've used it with other, many other patterns as well. Um, my rad vent, it's awesome. So I cast that on last night and then I also went ahead and cast on the second one. So I'm not done with the ribbing on this one yet. Um, it is a one by one rib. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. 
and I decided I was going to do it not the same. So they're going to be completely mismatched. Um, I do want to use the colors on both socks but in different places. So what I've been doing, all the colors I've used for that first sock I've put in this little bag, also Cotton Tail Farms. Um, so I've put all of those in there and then I also have this which was from the swap that with these yarns um, and I'm just putting in the ones that I've used for the second sock and that one so I can keep them separated and know which ones I've used for which. Um, I'm just kind of randomly picking one out of the bag which is also Cottontail Farms. This is her, I think it's her small, small zip bag but I love it. So this is one of the bags, it's super cute and then this little pouch from Neon Soul. I absolutely love these. They're amazing. I have two. I've sent them to friends. They're just, they're the best. They're the best little size for keeping notions. And they have the little carabiners so you can just clip it on. It's the best. So those I cast on mainly for driving or riding. Brian does most of the driving. He's done all of it so far. Um, to have something to work on. It's also going to be my 30 for 30 project since I finished the Scrappy Muscle Burrow. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see how they turn out and how much yarn I use because I'm not really using very much by doing five and seven rounds. But I guess it'll end up being like 10 and 14-ish rounds. I don't know. We'll see. Something else that I did, oh, that was a plow, is I started with seven rounds for the first color then five and I'm going to do seven with the purple um, so it's different I did five on this one and then seven so I don't know if that's going to screw me over in the end or if it's going to work out I feel like it's going to work out right it'll be the same number and it's going to I'll work I'll work that out sometime I'll work that out when I get to the uh to the uh heel but yeah those are they look like a big mess right now, but that's my second work in progress. And then I also have one more to chat about, but it's technically not cast on yet. Um, so when we, I finished the Felicity's Muscle Burrow and I was on the decreases of my Muscle Burrow and it was the end of day one of our like five days of driving. And I was like, well, I'm going to run out of things to do if I don't cast on something else. So that night I went ahead and wound up some more yarn. So this yarn is going to be used for the Blurry Cow, which is by Hohi Locatelli. And I had talked about this previously that I wanted to make this cow, and I thought that it was um, a three color cow, but it looks like it's only two colors which works perfect because I have these two wool and berries um, yarn that I got last month at their open house. And let me show you, I have the tags. So this is her tag, wool and berry. And the, this color right here is gingerbread. This was her Christmas special colorways. And then this one is, do I have it there? Yes, Glisten. So I thought they would go really well together um, and I kind of wanted a cow that was going to, I wanted to try one of the triangle cows. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I wasn't too clever because I didn't realize that it's a DK weight pattern and these are fingering weight yarns. So yeah, let's, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, it calls for a US 6 millimeter or no a US 6 which I'm not sure I didn't write the millimeter down of that um, but I'm going to swatch with it maybe tonight maybe not we'll see but I'm gonna swatch with it and see if I can what gauge I get with the fingering and if I can't get a good gauge and it doesn't look like it's gonna work out like that then I think I'll hold them double and um, do it that way. Make it a DK by holding the two fingering skeins double. So come back next time to see how that works out because I don't know how it's going to work. But I think the pattern is beautiful. I'm really excited um, to get it and try it out because I think it's going to be fun. I think it'll be a nice simple project to work on in the car. Um, so I really need to work on that tonight. So yeah. 
So those are all of the works in progress. So I'm gonna kind of combine the acquisitions and future makes into one segment this time because they're both gonna be pretty short. Um, so we'll just start with acquisitions. I didn't really buy anything. Um, I do have one thing to show you. I needed some new measuring tapes. Um, so I ordered these from, on, let me see, I think it's called the, it's the Sexy Knitter on Etsy and she'll be linked down below. But I just ordered some little measuring tapes from her. Um, this one, is funny, look at that. It's not exactly what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be more like a, this one. But that's my fault because I didn't look at it closely. But I really have been using this one a lot and I really like it, I think it's so cute. And then this one is just neat looking and it has the the um, key ring that you can use for that. So I got that. <clears throat> and then I also got some new chow Chi goo needles. Um, I thought that I was gonna need these to work the color work on the corgi sweater, but I didn't. So I ordered them and then realized I didn't need them. But I can use it for something else in the future, so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep them. So that's all of the acquisitions. Not a lot at all, and I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> um, future makes, I wanna finish the Corgi sweater. I'd like to have that finished by the next podcast. And then, um, let me see, what else did I write? I need to get some more manly colored yarn. <laughs> So what I need to do is get some darker colors or something like that because I want to make um, hats for Brian and Kai and then mittens for the boys and I don't have any colors for that so like they're all like girly colors so I need to get some more manly boy colors to do that. Um, my friend Natalie has made the Something Cozy sweater and she was talking about it in her year in review and oh, I wanna make it now. So I'm thinking that's gonna be a future make. Um, I didn't write down who it's by, but I'll have the picture and all that information here for you guys. Uh, it's beautiful, it kinda reminds me of the boxy, oversized, I think it's a pretty quick make too. Um, so I think I know the yarn that I wanna get to make it. Um, I just need to put that order in and figure out how much yarn I need and things like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that I wanna do. So yeah, that is all I have for future makes and acquisitions. As I keep alluding to, it has been a stressful couple of weeks. Um, you'll know all about that if you watched my vlog that I put out, um, what was it, on Sunday. So yeah, it's been crazy. Um, Brian had a contract for Seattle, Washington. He's a travel nurse, if you aren't aware. And we were getting ready to leave and go up there and they canceled the contract, um, which, I, is ridiculous that they can do that without any penalties. Um, if we canceled a contract, we would have lots of penalties and would get dropped from the travel company. Um, and yeah, so it's definitely a one-sided thing when it comes to the travel nurse thing, contract things. Um, but they canceled it, so there's nothing we could do about it. So what we did was um, I started applying to other places and things like that, and um, after a long while, we eventually, a long while, I mean like four days, but it felt like an eternity. We, um, got a job in Auburn, Washington, which is closer to where we were going to be staying in the Tacoma area. Um, so in the long run, it really works out better. Um, but its start date isn't until the middle of February, um, when the start date for the original one was supposed to be like the 23rd, I think. Um, so that's a big difference of, you know, no checks and things like that and where we were going and when we were leaving and all that kind of stuff. Cause we had the whole trip planned. We were going from 
um, just outside of Denver, up to Washington, staying a few days in Salt Lake City, that type of thing. Um, and I had all of that booked, so we didn't know like what to do because we were hoping to maybe get a couple of weeks extra in Colorado um, of an extension, sort of. And um, yeah, we it's Tuesday and we still don't know anything on that. So it looks like tomorrow we're going to be heading up to Washington. Um, but at this moment, I still really don't know. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but we are currently in Park City or the Salt Lake City area. We've been here since Sunday. It is Tuesday and we're having a great time. Yesterday we went to the aquarium and we went and ate yummy food food. Um, we love this area. We've been here twice. It's just one of our favorite places and we're enjoying our stay here. Um, it's, we've been really grateful that we've been able to like de-stress and not worry about things and have a good time. And yeah, it's just been crazy. Um, so yeah, it's been stressful. Um, I don't know what's going on in my life. <laughs> That's why there's been a lot of knitting time and things like that. So yeah, next time you see me, I will more than likely be in Washington, but, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's been crazy. And if you want to see that a whole week, um, of figuring out what's happening with our lives, you can go and watch the vlog. I'll link it up below. I'll link it up below. How does that matter? How does that work? I'll link it up above for you guys. Um, and you can check it out. I'm also going to have a vlog about our move or, our travels or whatever it is right now um they'll probably be split into two because it's already getting pretty long and yeah it's been, it's been stressful it's been stressful but I'm really grateful that God has you know brought us through it he's given us encouragement along the way and kind of shown us which way we're to go and things like that so trusting on him and following his lead and that's that's all I can really do right now <laughs> Let's see, I have the upcoming vlog that I was talking about, which is going to be of our travels here to Salt Lake City and our fun times here, and then also either going back to Colorado or going to Washington. Um, I had lots of knitting time, I said, just reading through my notes to make sure I said everything. But one thing I did want to say was thank you all so much who have watched the vlog and have sent so many encouraging words and who have offered your help or if I need anything or if we need anything. Um, I've really been touched by that and it's just been so sweet. And I mean, you guys don't know me at all. Um, I'm just some random person on the internet and you're being so sweet and prayers and, um, the kind words. And I just want to say thank you. Um, it's been really encouraging and really sweet and, made this stressful situation a little bit better. So I thank you for that. Okay, catching up on some TV. So TV, I was way behind. I think I said that last time, but I got a lot of TV watching. So I caught up on all the things like NCIS, um, CSI Vegas, Big Sky, um, all those type of things. I am all caught up which I'm so excited about. It makes me feel better when I'm caught up. Um, but all creatures, great and small, started back on PBS, and I have really been enjoying watching that. Um, uh, this is season three, and it's just really great. It's such a fun, such a fun show. So I've enjoyed that. Um, and then we watched the end of Willow, which was fantastic. I absolutely loved watching it. It was really, really fun. Um, kind of cheesy and like 80s humor a little bit, but it was really great and I really enjoyed it. Um, Brian really liked it too and I can't wait for season two. They better renew it. So that's all I've been doing, knitting and watching TV and stressing. So that's been life for the last week or so. But I'm going to wrap up here. We have to get the kids up and start doing some different things. We have some fun plans coming up today. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, I have to do the giveaway winner, don't I? Okay, giveaway winner. Sorry for making you wait so long because I totally forgot. Um, but we did have this shirt that is 
since we've no place to go, another row, another row, I'll have it linked down below in case you would like to purchase one. My sister got me this for Christmas and um, she sent two because she didn't know which size I was going to want. So I'm giving away the second one because that's what she told me to do. So thank you, Sabra, for that generous offer. But I picked a um, comment out of the, I think there was like 40 some comments from last podcast, which was awesome. Um, and the winner is Wendy, who is creating beauty in the dawn. Um, her comment was saying that her 2023 goal is to knit the Nora's vintage Afghan. And that sounds beautiful. I will look that up and put it on the screen so you guys can see it too. Um, but congratulations, Wendy. If you will just email me at gypsy.bird47 at gmail.com with your mailing address, and I will get this shipped out to you as soon as I can. Uh, so congratulations, and thank you, everyone, for, for watching and commenting and doing all the things. It means the world, and I'm really enjoying doing this with you guys and kind of showing you my makes. So thank you. Until next time. Hopefully it'll be a lot less stressful. It'll definitely be in a different state. Um, but I hope you guys have some abundance of knitting and crocheting time. And I will see you guys then. What episode is this? In your heart, I'm left behind. Finished objects. So the last couple of weeks... This is the third time I filmed this and it's still the first segment, really. Can you give me a, like 10 more minutes? Can you give me like 10 more minutes? <laughs> Love you. I'm kicking out my husband.